Good afternoon. Welcome to Giants Roundup as it's a therapy session today. The Giants get blown out at Petco today, 10 to 1. Not a good day at all. You can follow on Facebook, Twitter, and please be kind and hit that subscribe button. And no, it was not a good day for the Giants as the Friars just teed off on Tyler Beatty and a bullpen that needed some rest. And it just did not turn out well today for the Giants. I mean, Tyler Beatty, he was good the first two innings. The second time around, the bats got going on him. I did the strikeouts were good. Six strikeouts out of Beatty. That was good. The three walks, but the bad part was the five earned runs at Petco. And they just teed off on him once it got to the third inning. The Giants actually started off with a one nothing lead in the second in the second inning. That was the good part. When Belt sacrificed to score Nick Hundley, it's one nothing there. Then the third, then the damage started getting going in the third inning. When the bats just started teeing off on him, Christian Villanueva grounds hits a double to score Fernando Freddie Galvis and Francisco Cordero. A Franchi Cordero. Make it two to one. And then Corey Spangenberg in the fourth inning. It's a double to deep center to score Chase Headley to make it three to one. And then on top of that, later in the fourth inning, Jose Perella comes in and hits a double to deep center to score Chase Headley. I mean, a ground rule double to left to score Spangenberg to make it four to one. And then Galvis scores to center to score Perellis to make it five to one. And that would be the end of the line for Tyler Beatty. Oh, man. And even the bullpen was just shitting the bed today, too. Villanue Christian Villanueva comes in and hits a home run to make it to make it six to one. And then Cordero singles to right to make it seven to one. And Osich has two weeks to turn it around. I don't know if O'Kurt was is really any better or if DJ Snelton's any anywhere near ready for the majors just yet. Or if yeah. Or if Snelton's even ready for the majors just yet. But I think Osich is going to be out of here in two weeks when Will Smith comes back. I, I think once Will Smith's activated from the DL, I'm really starting to think Osich is going to be DFA'd and released. I don't see him going back. I just think he's ran. He's definitely had too many options in the majors. He just does, gives up too many home runs. Gives up too many earn runs at the worst time possible. So I, I just think it's the end of the line for, for Osage at this point. He's had too many chances. And I just don't see him coming back. And then Perella triples to deep right to score Spangenberg and Scoozer to make it 9-1 to one in the seventh inning. Then the other gas can comes in by way of... Derek Law, who gives up three runs, two earned, and one in the third innings. Osich, one and two thirds, two innings, two earned runs. And Ra and Law was not fooling anybody either. It was nine to one after that. Cordero scores on an, and then Perel scores on an error by Panic to make it ten to one. And it, it just looked like a bullpen that was just out of gas today. Strickland came in and gar was good in garbage time today, but yes, yeah, Law, not good today, and Law will probably go back to the minors sooner than later. I imagine Law is going to be going down once sometime later this week. 
Osich, I think his career with the Giants organization is going to be over. I just don't. I just see him being DFA'd. I don't. I think he's ran out of chances. He does still have options, but I just he's plateaued. I just don't see think. I just don't see him. I think his roster spot be better used by Oker or Snelton at this point of the, of his career. Maybe it's time for him to lap. Maybe a change of scenery might be good for him. Whereas for the Padres, Joey Lucchese continues to look like the ace as he goes six innings strong today, five hits, one earned, nine nine Ks. And then Jordan Lyles shut down, Kyle McGrath shut down inning. And Longoria is now over the Mendoza line. This is a really good sign for Giants fans. Long goes now two for three, went two for three today, and his batting average now is at 204 after a really Slow start to the season. Nick Hundley goes two for four. His average goes up to 174. McCutcheon drops to 203 after going 0 for three today. Austin Jackson, one for four. And Hunter Pence actually had a hit. He's right at the Mendoza line at 200. And yeah, let's get to Hunter Pence here. A lot of fans are ready to kick him out of San Francisco. And... This is going to be a really cr real critical week for Pence. He needs to get that bat going this week as the Giants are going to be facing some very tough opponents and the bats need to match the other bats. And certainly there's going to be some reinforcements coming for the rotation. That And that's going to be much needed news for the rotation. It looks like they're getting both Cueto and Samarja back this week. So that's really good news there. And that should, hopefully that should help rest the bullpen a bit. They've been overworked the last three games. And I thought this might have been a good opportunity to see po Posey pitch an inning. <laughs> I, mean, I probably would have thrown a position at player out there to pitch the eighth inning at this rate. But yeah, it's looking like um, some, both Samarja and Cueto are going to be back in the rotation this week. That's really good news for the rotation as of right now. So that moves... Holland into the five, Block to the four, Stratton to the three. So that's going to be good for now. That, hopefully that shores up the. Like I said hopefully that'll shore up the pitching for for a little bit. In that sense, but if Pence Pence needs to get that bat going this week, if Pence does not have a good week hitting wise, I could see a situation on the next homestand where they make the decision to call it Mac Williamson. Williamson's just tearing the ball off the cover in triple A, and he cannot be hanging around Sacramento too much longer the way he's hitting the ball. And I could see, I could really see a situation where Pence is bubble wrapped if, if things don't turn around, or he could be traded to somewhere like, say, Chicago. Where maybe they take, where the Giants take back a con a bad p contract in exchange. Maybe they partner with, say, the White Sox and say they take Pence's contract and we take part of a bad contract back in James Shields. I mean, James Shields is, maybe James Shields can shore up the back end of the rotation and if we can get maybe the White Sox to re retain some of his salary. So that could be an interesting situation too, where they they're going to have to figure out how to shore up. They could use, well, yeah, they could find a salary dump partner for Hunter Pence if, say, Williamson does have to come up due to his struggles, and you find another team, an, and you may have to swap out somebody else's bad contract for Hunter Pence, and maybe it's somebody that can come in and plug the back end of the rotation as a band aid. As I said, I think James Shields, that definitely could fit the possibility of a bad contract swap if you can get maybe the White Sox to agree to retain some of his final year next year. And this is the either you're gonna see more of these type of trades this year with the seat with the CBT and teams not wanting to go over the CBT. That is certainly something you're gonna see a lot more of. Our, sa our trades to dump salary. Or I could see a situation, say they can't find a, a viable suitor 
as in terms of a salary dump partner for Pence, that they just pay eat the rest of his contract for the season for him not to play. Maybe you bubble wrap him, save him for September, or you just really, or you just get him to a great wave his no trade clause to go somewhere, or you just put him on the sixty day disabled list with some sort of fan, phantom injury, and just bubble wrap him until September. There are certainly some things you can do with Hunter Pence if he cannot get the ball going, if he cannot get that bat going next week. Because you cannot keep Hunter Pen- you cannot keep Mac Williamson in AAA that much longer at this rate. And if if Mac Williamson does come up, he's not coming back down. You're going to have to go through his ups and downs with Williamson. That's just how it's going to be. And it, you know, this is one thing about Williamson. This is the first time he's been healthy in a very long time too. Last couple of years, he's had been battling injuries, and now he's really looking really good this year. Now that we finally have a healthy Mac Williamson. So there's, they cannot keep. So Hunter Pence is going to be on a really short leash this week. At some point, if things don't turn around, you're going to see Mac Williamson up as early as the next homestand. And the Padre and Tyler Beatty, he had some good stuff early. The command was better. Kamen was was definitely better in this game, but then he got then pitchers uh, solved him in the the bats solved him in the fourth inning. But there's certainly some good experience he can take take away from his two starts in the majors. Go back to Sacramento, get some more seasoning, and I think he'll be better for it. He can get some good this is good learning experience for him. He can go back to Sacramento, get some starts in, work on his mechanic work on his control issues. And certainly if the Giants are out of it, say by June or July, I certainly could see Tyler Beatty back up with the Giants once the season becomes lost, along with Andrew Suar- Andy Suarez. Suarez definitely looks ready for the majors. And he looks really good. But also Suarez, I think he's definitely going to be one that's going to be able to that they're going to be able to call up here mid-season if the Giants are out of it, and the youth movement does not look too bad. But that'll also be a time where it's pretty much going to be scratch. It's just going to be a scratch game. You're going to see a lot of youngsters back up with the Giants if the season certainly becomes lost, and this is going to be a very critical week for the Giants. They are. They are about to hit Murderer's Row on the schedule. As they as tomorrow they go to Phoenix to play three against the D-backs, that's not going to be any easy task. Oh, wait a minute. They don't have a game tomorrow. It looks like it's going to be a rest day for the Giants. Yeah, Giants have a rest day tomorrow before going to Arizona, so that is a reprieve right there. For the bullpens, they actually get a rest day. Before going to Arizona, they go to Arizona on Tuesday. It'll be, And that the good news is, Cueto will be re- returning to the rotation on Tuesday against Patrick Corbin. That should be a really good matchup. And the Giants were able to solve Corbin a bit the last start. But we shall see uh, how Cueto does since returning from the DL. We'll see if there's any rust or any issues. AJ Pollock and Marte are going to be the two players to watch. And then you got Austin Jackson and Nick Hundley on this. So you got 
So you're going to have Arizona starting Tuesday. They play three in Arizona. So they get Cueto against Corbin on Monday, I mean on Tuesday. And then on Wednesday, they get it'll be Chris Stratton against Robbie Ray. And Stratton looked a lot better in his last start. Can he? I'd like to see him carry that over to the next start. That's definitely one where Mar Marte is the only one, and Goldschmidt's had a little bit of ownage on him. But Longoria and Panic have definitely owned Robbie Ray, and that's a good. That's going to be a good good matchup there. And then the the finale the finale on Thursday on the nineteenth will be Ty Block against Zach Granke. And Granke struggled this year. This could be a good opportunity for the bats to feast on a on a Granke who's having a down year this far. Certainly, Gregor Blanco's had some success. Austin Jackson, Evan Longoria, Andrew McCutcheon. Whereas Goldschmidt, Peralta, and Pollock have had some success against Block, and we need the good Ty Block to come out of that game. Then it doesn't get any easier Friday. They get to go to they get to go to Orange County to play the Angels for for three. And they could be facing Otani, a healthy Garrett Richards. And that'll be the 20th, the 21st. And that'll be a weird time on the 21st. It'll be a 6.07 start. And the 22nd. Before they go back home to play the Nationals. And that's not... And the Nationals have kind of struggled out of the gates, too. So that's... And that'll be certainly the time we will find out if Pence can turn it around or not. And that'll be the first time we've played the Nationals since the brawl between Hunter Strickland and Bryce Harper. That would be very interesting if they end up playing each other, they end up facing each other in the next series, or if we see Tony Watson close those games. If we get to a save situation. And then they conclude the month against the Dodgers. And the Dodgers... The Giants are like one game out of last place now. This is somewhere they cannot be. But these are important. But right now, the D-backs and Angels are tearing the ball up. They're really good teams right now. They cannot really afford to get to eat too many more losses here. Or else it could get really ugly here going, going back home to play the Nationals and Dodgers, where the Giants may only have seven, eight wins per se, could be like 8 and 13 or something like that, and it could get really uh, it could get really hard. Where you're starting to get too far behind the 8 ball, or worse, you find yourself in last place by the time you go back for the next homestand. That's the worst case scenario right there, and, and I think we'll see Samarja start in the Angel series, so that's going to be good there. I think that's where Samarja returns, and that Hope we can help out that rotation there is having some Marja start in that series. And hopefully those guys can give the uh, give the bullpen some rest. But Longoria, that's definitely good. Hopefully he can carry that momentum onto the onto the D-back series. That's certainly something that needs to happen. And I don't see the D-backs going away this season, this this year. If they really start pulling away with this the season and this becomes a loss for the Giants, you're going to see players like Duggar up. That's something that could happen as early as May. If they start really falling way behind, you could certainly see Steven Duggar be the next call up after Williamson or Austin Slater. Or you could, so there's certainly some call ups coming. Or maybe, maybe DJ Snelton gets his first cup of coffee. There are some options there too. It's, and unfortunately, do the, does the front office start talking the words culture change for next for 2019? Possibly a situation where Bochi's not coming back next year. You start maybe getting some candidates lined up for a possible managing vacancy. That's a possibility. You could see um, 
possibly a successor for Bobby Evans. I don't think Evans can survive. It could be a total house cleaning. You could see something very similar to what happened to the 49ers a couple years ago after chip after the chip kelly year where you had a, a complete house cleaning i could see the front office take a page from the 2016 49ers playbook and just completely clean house get rid of the gm get rid of maybe part ways with bochi not retain anybody on the current coaching staff and just start clean and maybe it's time for it could be time for a clean break if things don't turn around by the by May, and this is where we're heading. I think we could be heading for a house cleaning. This is something. This is, I think, the worst stretch the Giants have been under this ownership. Maybe, maybe it's, if not that, as bad as what it was in '95, '96 when you had Van Landingham, Leiter, Mark Carrion. I mean, this is. Those were some. Those were some rough years. You barely got people into Candlestick Park that year. You saw a lot of empty chairs at Candlestick that year. And you know what? This is, you know, if that happens, that the attendance could get really interesting by the middle of the season. You could see the attendance drop more into the thir low 30,000s or the high 20,000s, 25,000, 26,000 per game. Because I don't think they're going to sell seats out this year. Unless it's the Dodgers or somebody like that. So this is tough sledding, and they certainly need to get it turned around here soon, or it's it's Quaytons. All right, let's go with the MLB roundup for today. The Red Sox beat the Orioles 3-1. to one. Your winning pitcher, Heath Hembree, former giant Heath Hembree, you're losing pitcher Dylan Bundy. Alex Benatendi goes three for four. Mitch Moreland three for four for the Red Sox. And now they are 13 and two. First up. And Chris Sailing was sailing away with one more, with only one earned run. And eight strikeouts. And eight strikeouts in this game. So it was definitely sailing in this game. Heath Embry, two scoreless innings, picks up the win. Matt Barnes gets his third save. Oh, it was not a save. Okay, my bad. Bundy, tough luck for him. Three runs, one earned in five and two-thirds innings pitched. And this does not exactly bode well for Dan Duquette and... Buck Showalter being five and eleven, they need to get a critical run here down at the the, the bat bottom end of the month here for Baltimore. They're going to be talking about vacancies there. The Mets beat the Brewers three to two, improved to twelve and two. Your winning pitcher J. Rus Familia, your losing pitcher Matt Albers, and a Nimmo goes three for five in this game with a home run. And a triple. And Wilmer Flores goes with a home run in the game for the Mets, too. And no, and Thor only gives up an unearned run in this game in five innings pitched. 11 Ks. And the rest of the bullpen was excellent for the Mets. Former Padre Jolis Chassin. An earned run in four innings pitched. Four Ks, three Three walks. Taylor Williams, an earned run in one and two-thirds innings pitch. Albers, an earned run in two-thirds of an innings pitched. And the Cardinals beat the Reds 3-2. Your winning pitcher, Carlos Martinez, your losing pitcher, Homer Bailey. No! <laughs> Another loss for him. And Bailey actually had a good outing. Three earned runs and seven innings pitched. But Martinez was just a skosh better. Seven scoreless innings, 11 Ks. The four walks were the only bad thing. 
And then Bud Norris gives up a run, earned run. So does Tyler Lyons. And believe it or not, Anthony Hamilton had his first, first home run of the season. Former giant Adam Duvall had, his, had a home run today. Goes two for four, now up to a buck sixty for the Reds. Yadier Molina, two for three. And now the Reds fall to two and thirteen on the season. And we don't know how much longer Brian Price has. The noose could be getting really tight on him. His head could be heading for the guillotine really soon if he's not careful. So we'll see. But I think if they got to get a good, get some wins soon, or I think you're going to hear the words Jim Riggleman taking over as the interim manager for the red for the Reds. And the Phillies sweep the Rays, and now we're nine and five on the season. Your winning pitcher, Yaxel Rios. Your losing pitcher, Ryan Yarborough. Former Giant Denard Span goes two for four. Bryce Hoskins goes two for four. Not a good day for Ben Lively. Three earned runs and four innings pitched. Yarborough, five runs, two earned in four and two-thirds innings pitched. Matt Andrees, two earned runs and two and a third innings pitched. Andrew Kittredge, three earned runs in one inning pitched. And it was just, and now the Rays fall to three and twelve as maybe Kevin Cash's seat seat's starting to get a little warm over there in Tampa Bay. The Pirates beat the Marlins seven to three. Your winning pitcher Ivan Nova. Your losing pitcher Jose Urena. Josh Bell goes three for five and have yourself a game. Sterling Marte five for five in this game. With a home run. Annie Arena, five innings pitched, four earned, five Ks. Two earned runs, two innings pitched out of Omar Despagne. Odrismar Despagne. And the Rockies beat the Nationals six to five. Your winning pitcher. Adam Ottavino, your losing pitcher, Sean Doolittle, as he gives up his first blown save of the season. And not a good outing out of Tyler Anderson. Three, run, three runs, one earned, and four and two-thirds innings pitched. Brian Shaw gives up an earned run. Not the greatest of days out of Steven Strasburg. Four earned, six innings pitched. Sean Kelly, an earned run in two-thirds of an inning pitched. No, it was just tied. Okay, it's not a blown save for Doolittle, but just bad time to give up a run for Sean Doolittle. And the A's beat the Mariners 2-1. to one. Your winning pitcher, Sean Manea. Your losing pitcher, King Felix. And Jed Lowry hit his fourth home run of the season for the A's. And Sean Manea is really starting to emerge as the ace of the A's rotation. Seven innings pitched, one earned run, ERA of 1.634 Ks. And this is something the A's needed. They needed to find that ace, and it's looking like it's going to be Sean Manea. With Kendall Graveman struggling as bad as he is. Felix Hernandez, six Innings pitch, 7K. Six and the third innings pitch, 7Ks. And Hernandez also hit two batters, Piscotti and Chapman. Matt Joyce hit by Pazos. I'm going to see if something's happened with uh, Graveman yet.
right, nothing yet. No news yet on possibly Graveman moving to the bullpen, but Manea has definitely been the good, been the good find thus far for the A's this se- in this young season, as he's definitely had some good good success this year thus far. And the L.A. Dodgers beat the Arizona Diamondbacks seven to two. Your winning pitcher, Clayton Kershaw, with only one earned run and 12 strikeouts. Your losing pitcher was Zach Godley. Five earned runs in four innings pitched. And I gave up six runs, five earned in four innings pitched, with six walks. Silviano Bracco with an earned run. And then the current game currently in progress. No score at the end of the first between the Astros and the Rangers. And Mother Nature sure certainly wreaked havoc today on a lot of games with snow. Both games of the doubleheader between the Yankees and Yankees and Tigers were postponed due to snow. Twins, White Sox, they were postponed due to snow. And the Cubs and the Braves were postponed due to snow. And the Royals and Angels were postponed due to rain. We do not know when makeup date. I'm going to look at when the makeup dates are going to be. As that storm just wreaked havoc on a lot of games in the Midwest today. All right. Braves Cubs is going to be made up on May 14th. And the doubleheader snow out. And they're going to have a hard time. Uh, okay, it looks like they've uh, like they're going to play a split double header on June fourth. So that looks like that's going to happen. Now it looks like June fourth will be a makeup day for that game. And then twins. single one of those kids had every opportunity to and then it looks like the uh it looks like now the twins are going to be playing two games in san juan puerto rico and the white Sox and twins will play have a double header on in June sometime too. So you could see two double headers, possibly two to three double headers. Or you could see two postponements and one possibly maybe not getting made up. I think that's a real possibility too. All right, let's go down on the farm. Going on with Fresno in Sacramento today. And the Grizzlies. Blank the aces five to nothing today. Yep, 
your winning pitcher was Raymond Gurjuan. Kent Emanuel gives six strong scoreless innings for the... And Brandon Shipley was good. Joey Krabiel takes the loss. Four earned runs and a third of an innings pitched. And John Kemmer goes two for four for the Grizzlies today. And down in Sacramento, up in Sacramento today on the other side of the 80. The River Cats get blown out today by the Rainiers 15 to 5. Not a good day for Jose Flores. Austin Slater goes three for five. Austin Slater goes three for five in the series. Mac Williamson continues to swing a hot bat three for three. And this is going to be a critical week for him to stay hot. Alan Hansen, two for three. And Josh Rutledge really struggling in AAA right now, uh, hitting 059 right now. Ryder Jones not having a good year in Sacramento at, at this point, hitting a buck 88. And Duggar's getting it to slight, has been better. Last his batting average is up to 250. But I'd like to see a little more consistency and better performance out of Duggar before calling him up. Jose Flores, oh boy, nine runs, six earned in three innings pitched. Ooh, Stephen O'Kurt takes one on the chin today. Five earned runs in one inning pitched. It looks like Roberto Gomez was optioned back to Sacramento and earned run in two innings pitched. And the attendance was 7,062 at Rayleigh Field today. So that doesn't help the Giants out at all as in terms of options to replace Osich with O'Kurt. Currently struggling is bad. So your next option might be DJ Snelton if you were to call up anybody at this point. And he didn't exactly light the world on fire in spring training. So you're just going to have to tread water with Osich until, until Will Smith is back. I think that will conclude it for today's show. I will be back on Tuesday night after, after the Giants play the D-backs. Hopefully we get... Some better results out in Phoenix. Hopefully the, the the players enjoy the rest tomorrow. You guys have a good night, and hopefully we can get, get some wins over there in Chase Field. Do not want to get too much far further behind tonight this year.